new, 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 new. All right, this week, Lady Ada, what do we got? Okay, starting off, we've got Nick Toll's book, Programming with MicroPython. Um, also covers a little bit of CircuitPython because it's got Circuit Playground Express, but you know, CircuitPython is just a variant of MicroPython. Um, this book is enormous. Let me grab it. Big book. Uh, it has a lot of code. Nick Toll uh, is the editor of the, the writer of the Moo editor and maintainer. Um, this kind of takes you everything you want to build hardware, make projects, and it's not like a Python book where it's like, okay, now import NumPy. Like it actually teaches you how to build stuff with the um, you know the the limit of MicroPython, which is you know it's on this little board, standalone. You have a ton of memory. You can do a lot, but like you can't necessarily like import NumPy or import Flask. But um, it'll get you going with uh, using uh, MicroPython, CircuitPython. He's a great guy, and it's a great book. He's working Nick on this all Toll's a year. fantastic author, and he's also very thoughtful on how he's helping build communities in the Python world. Yeah, it teaches you hardware and Python at the same time. So this is a good book for people. Who are and an important lesson. Okay. Um, Thanks. Oh, this is a um, education kit. So we've got a class kit, and the next one is a, a classroom pack yeah. for a university. So we have it in the store if you want to purchase it. Uh, it's for a, a university program, okay. but uh, it's also available for others. These are handy. Okay. These Very are super handy. handy. These and are actually used. These these were actually sold um, for use with GPSs. Like if you have a, a dash G GPS yeah. computer and you want to be able to replace the SD card easily because you're like updating maps and stuff. Or if you're like me and you have cameras that are over there and you just want to like switch out the SD cards because your camera's mounted over there all the time. Yeah, this works. Yeah, let me show it on the overhead. It's, 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 it's very simple. You get um, an SD card on this side and it's just, it actually is just like SD card size and shape. Except there's a thin cable coming out. So you can probably get it through like, you know, slots and doors and, and whatever. And on the other side, there's a socket and it just connects the pins from one to the other. And this is a nice clicky click out, click in. And it's nice and flat in the bottom, you can glue it. And um, you have like, a, it's almost two feet or so of uh, flex cable. And to test it, we actually hooked this up. We both use it in our replicator because we just don't want to keep having to like, it, it's kind of annoying to try to grab the SD card. So we mounted it on top, so that's easier to get. We also used it with a Raspberry Pi computer. So, and it worked fine. It booted, and you could like run Pixel and stuff. So it definitely works at high speeds. But you know, it's, it's a hack. Like you're not supposed to do this, but it seems to work okay. It's like making super long wires out of the back of the SD card. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, you can okay. do it. So um, we have other varieties too. We also have a micro SD version. Uh, same thing, micro SD card in one end, and then a socket in the other. Just makes it, especially for Raspberry Pis, where you, it's like. It can be a little annoying to try to grab um, oh. the card out. This can make it really easy for you if you're doing a lot of work with it or you want to mount it elsewhere. Um, same exact idea. You have a socket on one end and a micro SD on the other. It works great. We booted it with a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it booted up, worked fine. You know, you can do yeah. stuff with it. So yeah. I have so many devices that are kind of like permanently there and I always have to like fish out the SD card. This is handy. Yeah. Thanks for stocking these. Yes. No, I, th I showed you. You're like, that's handy. Oh, yeah, I'm I like, this that. is handy. Okay, next up. It's a square. It's a black square. <laughs> what does this do? This is Eon Tech's um, flexible fabric. Uh, this is a um, spandex uh, nylon fabric. It's very stretchy. It's got a nice hand to it. It feels a little bit like um, like you know, fabric that like workout stuff is made out of. It's got that like sh shimmery cyber feel. It's flexible. It's stretchy in all directions, and it's got a uh, high resistivity that changes a lot. So I thought I'd show it off. Let's start off. Um, it's basically the same demo. Yeah, but this is live. This is real. Okay, hold on. Let me get my alligator clips. So I have it hooked up here. Hold on. How is it in range? Hold on. Live demo. Well, I always got the video. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, it came, came undone. Wires. Wires. Okay. Oh, look at that. So, um, like right now it's about 100, oh, sorry, 45 kilo ohms. And then when I stretch it, oh, you know what? This material is. Oh, you have it on. 
Sorry. You have it on another <laughs> type of material that's, that, also conductive. that's also conductive. These are these are live demo are engineering simple. engineering live show problems. Uh, All your fabrics conductive. Over. Yeah, I'll fix it in post. Okay. All your fabrics are conductive. <laughs> Well, the table's actually oh. ESD safe too, but it's, it's okay. Okay, so when it's not stretched, um, it's about 45 kilo ohms. And then if I stretch the fabric, you can see it goes down to about 25 kilo ohms. So it stretches about two times, and then the resistance goes down two times. So you can use this. Um, it's not very good for passing current because of that high resistivity, uh, kilo ohms, yeah. um, about 20 kilo ohms per square inch. But um, it's good for stretch sensors, flex sensors, um, if you want like something to measure strain or movement, um, this is really good fabric. It's really easy to sew in, in stitch. Like it's a very, it's very fabricy. Yeah. And, um, in the data sheet, they even say it can go through 30 washes with no change in resistivity. So okay. Someone was asking about that. You can wash it and it works quite well. I would, you know, you'd want to stitch it or alligator clip to it. Like this works quite well. I just clipped onto alligators. And then on your other side, you'd have a microcontroller with a resistor divider, uh, or some other way of measuring um, low, uh, uh, high, high resistive, low current um, changes. And, um, but it, it works like very well, it stretches right back and, and retains that same uh, shape and resistance. So in a sense, it's better than the rubber. I have, you know, this um, conductive rubber, but the conductive rubber never quite, it, yeah. it, it takes a long time to get back. It doesn't, it's not as springy as this, which is really um, spandex. All right, Anton has great jokes tonight. He's like, oh, like stretching the truth. You could put the word truth on it and then stretch it, and it can make different sounds. Because, yeah. like, all there is is uh, truth stretching, as far as I can tell, yeah. in the world right now. Okay. Okay, so that's the, the first fabric. Okay. The conductive we, stretch fabric. We have more fabric. This year's fall fashion is conductive. All so right. that's it. It's a, you know, it, it feels good. It's, it stretches. It's the same fabric. It's just showing how it wrinkles. Okay. To give a sense of the, the softness. Okay. Well, that's a different color. This is it. Uh, no, it's just the lighting. It just. It, it's oh just, yeah. It's still black. It's just well lit. Oh, I see. So it's textured. Oh, gotcha. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Next up, we have uh, something else. Okay. We also have this like very low resistivity heater fabric. So this fabric is also from Eon Tech. And this fabric is the other one was about twenty kilo ohms per square inch, and this one is about like forty ohms per square inch. It's much, much lower. It's non-woven, so it feels like a felt, like a suede. It's actually kind of what it feels like a little bit, like a papery, suede -y material. Um, it's not stretchy at all, but what's nice about it is you can actually put current through it and it will heat up. It's what? also like very, if you want to use it to pass power, you could probably do that as well. I have a, this thermal camera that I thought I would... Yeah, this is the thermal cam camera that I kept taking photos of uh, MOSFET with. But now it's being used for, wait, I have to to log into your phone. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So let me get this going Heat it up, here. Lady Ada. I have to figure out how to show. You might want to back that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working. Okay, look, you can see it. Oh, man, that's cool. Okay, you got to get it. hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Okay, wait. Our demos are getting complicated. I know, this is... This Watch is out, Lady Ada, there's a predator. Danny Glover is like, I'll go get you, and he's like... Ugh. Sorry. Okay, so here I can actually see, and this is my hand, so you can see how warm I am. So um, these alligator clips are um, quite warm, but in between, you know, you're getting maybe, you know, this feels like maybe 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, I mean um, 80 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So it's almost as warm as my skin. Um, and this is just 12 volts. I think, you know, it depends on on how much voltage you want to put through it, <clears throat> how much current you're willing to put through it. Um, this is also current limited to one amp. It will never get like boiling hot, but um, you know, you can get, you know, warm enough maybe to heat something or to keep something warm, wrap it on some electronics to keep the electronics from getting too cold outside. So it, it's very flexible and um, you can cut it and puncture it. Unlike the wire-based heating pads where there's literally wires running through it and you're like, you know, the wires heat up and it heats up the pad. This is the, the fabric itself is heating this up. This is full. So it's, it's, I mean, sorry, it's warm. It's, well, yeah. <clears throat> so it's, it's a fully uniform uh, throughout the fabric. Okay. Um, and it's neat. You get, a, you get like a big sheet of it. So it's kind of fun. You can um, yeah. cut how This is want. neat. I have, I have a bunch of ideas. I'll, I'll get to them soon. Yeah. And then what's interesting is like the, the, the um, 
the alligator clips get really warm. So you'll disconnect them. You can see. So, it. so you can make a '70s dance outfit and call it Disco Inferno. By the way, everyone is doing excellent jokes tonight. These are like family-friendly jokes. These are like really good. Keep it up. Okay, good work. You can see it cooling down. So slowly but surely. But it's you know it, you can also um, heated also, seats. <laughs> You use for heated seats, but again, it's not going to get really, really hot. It's just it's just warming fabric. Yeah. And then you can also use it for EMI because it's it's such low resistance that you can use it for shielding and stuff as well. Yeah. So that's the two fabrics that we shield have. and warm your wallet. Okay. Yeah. I can also show resistance. You know. Very yeah. Quickly. Why not? Show the resistance of. I mean, it soon I'll have my Dave Jones multimeter, and I'll be able to I use know. that. Because I didn't fall for the fake. So this is only yeah. 49 ohms between these two points. So, yeah, very, very low resistance. Compare the other one was more like 40K. Yeah. I just heard there is a San Francisco-based hoodie company called Block Hoodie Chain, and it's made out of this material. Yeah, that would be surprising. See, I can keep up with you guys in the chat tonight. Okay. All right. Um, very funny. Yeah, here all week. Okay, uh, the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, is this. Yay, it's the PDM mic. It's small, it's simple, but you know, it's actually, um, I haven't seen any world that sells a PDM microphone. So I'm glad that we, uh, we stock it. So this microphone is a PDM pulse density um, modulation microphone. It's the third kind of mic. So the first kind of mic most people get is an electret mic uh, or a uh, MEMS microphone. This is our analog output. And then you can also get an I2S microphone, which has a little chip inside that gives you I2S uh, lo you know, logic level out. This is the third kind. This is PDM, and this is actually what is usually used in production. Like, if you're actually buying a product, PDM is what they use because it's extremely low cost, and if you have this hardware support, it's very, very easy to read. Much easier to read than I2S, which has, like, uh, uh, you know, there's like left and right, and you have to have like a full channel set up. This one, it just basically pulses data out with the clock. And the pulses, which are high and low, the, the probability density of those pulses um, changes with the audio level. So the upshot is, if you have a chip that has a PDM microphone interface, this microphone is great. It's very simple. Um, you only need two pins. You can have uh, two microphones, left and right, share the same channel. One does left, one does right. And like, if your chip can do all the hardware stuff for you, it's great. If you don't have a PDM interface on your chip, though, it's really, really hard to use these because you have to clock them at one to three megahertz, and like you can't go less than that. It, it'll actually shut down if you don't give it at least one megahertz because it's like, oh, I'm going to sleep now. So we have some code for the, the Cortex M0, um, the SAMD21 chips that we use, and I've seen also ST has uh, code um, for their chipsets. But you, you really can't use an 8-bit microcontroller very easily. You, you can with a lot of hacking, um, but pretty much this is like you have an FPGA or you have um, a dev kit or a single board computer, and it's like, we have PDM on these pins. This microphone will do wonderfully for you. And I've got a demo for this. Uh, of course you do. Well. So this is actually, Dean made this demo for me, which is really sweet, because you go to an FFT library. So this is just taking an FFT of the... Um, microphone which we just popped on the back here and now I'm just going to whistle and you'll see a spike around here and then maybe I can try whistling higher and then it auto ranges so you know there's not when there isn't uh, any particularly high frequency it just sort of has the standard you know uh, logarithmic uh, you know, noisy uh, down here but then it, it uh, dies off as you get into higher frequencies they usually get with microphones but it works great um you know we use this in the circuit playground express and um there's sometimes i think people might find these useful that was a question in the chat is that the microphone we use in the circuit playground express it is because it is the cheapest way to add a microphone to something could you can you whistle the um close encounters theme song no i don't know it let's do 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 i can try try yeah That's good. Okay. I did the best I could. I, I don't really actually seen Close Encounters. This means something. I know. It builds um, this mashed potato sculpture. That's cool. Do you want to watch it later? Maybe watch okay. it. So the, the thing about PDM mics is they're really, really, really cheap. And it, basically all microphones that are MEMS are PDM underneath. 
And then if it's an analog MEMS mic, it actually has a little analog converter. It's an I2S mic, it has a little I2S converter. But underneath, PDM is what all MEMS microphones um, emit, basically. So, you know, when we were doing Circuit Playground Express, cost was a big factor. The Cortex-M0 has um, a PDM peripheral, and so we were able to add audio via PDM because it was just, it's, it's the, again, it is half the price of anything else because you don't have all this extra circuitry. Um, but, you know, if you get um, those, uh, the home assistants that have like eight microphones, those are going to be PDM mics as well. Okay. So maybe you want to build your own if you, if you have a chip that can handle it. That's another thing. It, you're more likely to get a chip that can handle eight PDM mics than something that can handle four I2S uh, channels. All right. Good work, Lydia. We'll do the recap in a sec. That was the new products for the week. 